Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. You may be wondering, how is China getting its fix for NVIDIA GPUs? While sanctions largely restrict these purchases, some buyers are finding workarounds. The crackdown on exports continues, but that is not stopping the markets from attempting to meet the demand. Reuters, with the exclusive. Their journalists speaking to 10 vendors in Hong Kong were able to confirm that A100, the top NVIDIA chip, is available in China for under the price of about 20,000 US dollars. Now, that is about twice the retail cost for this sort of an item. Uh, essentially, whether you call this a gray market or a black market, the chips are available in China. However, the reason for the sanctions is being confirmed to be effective at its intended purpose that a spokesperson would say that the substantial impact has been had on China's ability to get a hold of these chips. Also to keep in mind, since around November of last year in 2022, a slower variant of chip was produced by NVIDIA now, just to recap that story, late last year, NVIDIA received order to halt sales to top AI firms in China. $400 million in sales affected this quarter could be lost if firms decide not to buy alternative NVIDIA products. Essentially, NVIDIA was put in a position to create a nerfed chip that could be sold to China. China is home to a number of startups aspiring to make chips that can compete with NVIDIA and AMD. Many were founded by former staffers of those companies, though few have attained meaningful scale. In parallel, China will develop its own chips, and it will be interesting to see where things go from there. We can see that the reason for doing so is related to competition and being able to limit China and its abilities to become dominant in the AI sector. Then about one month later, the offering from NVIDIA in November to make these chips available, the A800 chip. The company's effort to produce something that can be sold to China and still be in compliance with U.S. trade rules. And it was noted that a chip-to-chip -chip comparison, it is a noticeable downgrade from the A100. So perhaps in an individual or a small data center, this may be comparable Certainly, it is the larger data centers which are being targeted in particular by the move to produce a less capable chip. And back to the main article. Now, how are these A100s getting to China in the first place? One way that vendors are procuring the chips is through excess stock that is found on the market on the way from one place to another. Small units are maybe able to be moved around without much notice and moved through intermediary countries, not all of the stock necessarily stays together. The counts of these things, unit counts, uh, is not as granular as management would like to keep it. So supply chains are messy. And when you move around a lot of powerful chips, which are very much a hot commodity, these things can disappear in transit. A Chinese researcher in their department, where they have four A100 cards, was able to report that one vendor had eight H100 chips available for purchase. So it appears for the time being in China, buyers are able to get their hands on these chips. However, the caveat is that is limited at size and scale. Large institutions large tech companies, government, etc., are going to have a hard time attaining the size and scale of data center that would pose a serious threat to those imposing sanctions. Just goes to show where there's a will, there's a way. People are going to run their own model in whatever country as long as they can get their hands on these chips. Not just the A100s, but maybe the 800s will cut it. Baidu is one among these large tech companies trying to buy up as many GPUs as possible. Their Ernie bot recently they claim is beating ChatGPT on certain metrics. However, looking into this, it's 
sort of opaque to tell what those metrics are. Naturally, they are going to be developing their own language learning models. And in particular, these models are going to be privy to Chinese language sets, but they are testing them with similar research parameters as universities in America. The CTO, speaking in qualitative terms, says that the broad enhancements are in efficacy, functionality, performance, now creative writing. We don't see that this necessarily translates to uh, numbers exactly. So what other metrics are being tested here? that one test done by the Chinese Science Journal was based on a lawyer exam where Ernie 3.5 surpassed ChatGPT4 in Chinese. Now, that would be impressive if ChatGPT had been primarily trained to pass a lawyer exam in Chinese. It would make perfect sense that Baidu's ChatGPT equivalent would excel in Chinese, being a Chinese language learning model. Another test focused on Chinese, where Ernie 3.5 is ahead of ChatGPT. It's only a later test, which mentions taking on questions in science and humanities developed by a group of US universities. Of course, China is going to have its equivalent of ChatGPT, and of course it is going to be advertised to be as advanced and as capable as ChatGPT. The question is, will China and these companies be able to get their hands on enough graphics cards to pursue their work in this field? Following the Reuters reporting, South China Morning Post put out their own patch of information on the GPU smuggling story. Tech War, strong demand in China for advanced chips used on AI projects, creates growing market for smuggled NVIDIA GPUs despite U.S. ban. As they're reporting, it is an under-the-counter trade that has apparently prospered despite a U.S. government ban. Shanghai-based semiconductor engineer surnamed Tang said, Sourcing smuggled GPUs has become a big money-making enterprise because of strong domestic demand for NVIDIA A100s and H100 GPUs. And just to emphasize the scale here, they're saying, he is among thousands of unofficial intermediaries sourcing NVIDIA's high-end GPUs to meet the demand from various Chinese tech firms now developing chat GPT-like services. And as noted in this article as well, on Chinese social media, there is access to vendors who may come into inventory of the much-in-demand A100 and H100 chips. The tech companies purchasing the A100s has led to a shortage in the market, and that situation is pushing prices up, although they do appear to fluctuate. Baidu's chat GPT alternative, ErnieBot, that was built on NVIDIA A100 GPUs, has switched to A800. And as such, this demand for the A800 has pushed up the prices for these products. Any of these large companies, they're going to buy all that they can get, whether it's the nerfed chip that they're allowed to buy or A100s on the dark markets. The question is, how good is the product going to be? And as well, too, NVIDIA has made it clear that the change in these rules is going to have a loss for them. The tightening of the export controls reduces sales. They said in a separate article that China can be up to 20-some percent of NVIDIA's business. And even with a booming product, which is in demand all over the world, this is going to impact NVIDIA's bottom line to not be selling their top chip in China. Also, to have to go through the extra R&D and fulfillment of a customized lower model product, that is not the desirable position to be in as a chip manufacturer who is generally focused on bringing the cutting edge to the market.
And the latest development, in a tit-for-tat move, China moving to restrict the export of two chemical elements, gallium and germanium, which are essential in the production of some of these semiconductors. And it says, Exporters for the two metals will need to apply for licenses with the Commerce Ministry if they want to start or continue to ship them out of the country, and will be required to report details of the overseas buyers and their applications, it said. In a move to limit China's access to NVIDIA chips, China will limit the producers of those chips from accessing some essential elements. Now, it's noted that the metals are not particularly rare or difficult to find, but China does have them cheaply, when otherwise they are a high cost for extraction. Having to source these materials from elsewhere could affect prices and the bottom line. And what a headline. On the 4th of July, CNBC explaining to us two niche metals, gallium and germanium, that are key to manufacturing semiconductors. Goes on to note that China produces 60% of the world's germanium and 80% of gallium, according to Critical Raw Materials Alliance. However, analysts said the impact of the restrictions will be limited, which we will eventually see. The trade war goes on, now intertwined in the battle for AI supremacy. But that's the story for now. Leave us a comment if you had any input on the story. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. Links will be in the description. I hope this caught you up on everything you needed to know. And as always, I hope you learned something.